Hi everyone, meteorologist Matt Gray with a special edition here uh, of the video Brainstorm. It's been a little while since I've done this. We've had some busy schedules. We've had, <clears throat> sorry, all sorts of stuff coming on, but uh, been really interested to get back into creating more of this video content for the Brainstorm newsletter. And we had just a golden opportunity here on Sunday, August 28th, because tomorrow is something quite historic and momentous and something that if you like the weather you probably like this as well and that is space exploration that's right we're talking about the Artemis 1 mission one of the biggest baddest rockets that has ever been made by humanity the newest space exploration vehicle created by NASA and uh, what's going to set the stage for the next, next phase in space exploration. Uh, really proud to say that I know some people as a Florida native. I know, crazy. Somehow I have, uh, have the real privilege of, of knowing some people and have known for many years who have uh, been working on this project. And look, there is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are doing that and making uh, really this grand achievement or what is eventually going to become this grand achievement which is eventually getting humans to the planet Mars through this new space system uh, is going to be really interesting. So, all right, the first launch here of the first mission of the Artemis program is Monday the 29th. Now, here on the West Coast, the launch window is going to open at 5.33 in the morning, so 8.30 local time in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The weather, 79 degrees, super muggy, 30% chance of rain. That is about what an average summer day in Florida is like in the rainy season. And launch, 70% go for when that launch window opens tomorrow. So let's talk a little bit about why that is the case and uh, dig more into some of the weather criteria because look, Getting into space, that's hard. Surviving in space is hard. Getting out of the weather layer of our atmosphere, the first layer of our atmosphere, that can be the hardest of all. So let's look at the trajectory here of how the uh, the Space Launch System rocket, which will launch the Orion capsule, nobody is going to be in it this time. This is a full test of what's going to be eventually in Artemis 2 taking people around the moon and then by Artemis 3 I believe is going to be putting people back on the moon for the first time in over 50 years so rocket launches the most hazardous part is from liftoff until they get through the thickest bottom layer of the atmosphere where all the weather happens and so you end up with basically putting a lot of stress on the rocket as it moves upward and that's what they call max Q or max dynamic pressure you can see approximately that's going to be about 40,000 feet. That is right in the zone still of where uh, kind of the altitudes that we look at when we're talking about weather and weather systems and how they move around. So monitoring those changes both in the horizontal and the vertical really, really important to make sure that these rockets get up very safely, especially when you're talking about not only multi-million dollar pieces of equipment, but also when there are people inside. And boy, let me tell you what, the weather in Florida can be quite challenging to forecast and safety is number one. And that's why even in the morning, which is a pretty good time to launch in summertime in Florida, you're still only at that 70% go. So let's take a look at some of the weather criteria. This is in the official press kit for the Artemis Lawn launch. And there is a lot of stuff. I mean, you really need to have really, really good conditions to safely launch this rocket because any little thing that can mess with it, you're talking about static electricity, you're talking about ice buildup, things of that nature that are just just not good in any way when you're dealing with, dealing with that type of situation. Uh, now, as for the reasons why these certain weather thresholds happen, that is way beyond my realm of expertise. But here's some of the things on your screen that we're talking about. So we're talking about there's a lot of different temperature uh, little temperature issues um, to kind of put it on a more sad note uh, a really cold morning 
was one of the reasons why there was a part failure uh, on a piece of the space shuttle, space shuttle Challenger in the 1980s and one of the reasons why there was a massive failure uh, in one of the rocket boosters and why all the people who were on board the Space Shuttle Challenger tragically ended up dying uh, in that accident. So weather temperature thresholds, super, super important. Wind also very important as well. You don't want to put additional stress on the rocket as it's moving up through the sky. And you can see, yeah, upper level wind conditions. So winds up higher as well where you're near that max dynamic pressure. And also liftoff winds on the launch pad. After all, you don't want anything going wrong just as you're getting that rocket off the ground. And so really strong winds can be a big issue. Precipitation. Things that may be falling as rain will quickly turn into buildups of ice as the rocket goes higher. So no launching through precipitation. The same goes for cloud cover. Cloud cover, big issue. And uh, not something that you're going to see many rockets launching through. You can see here. Yeah, clouds, especially high up clouds that are ice clouds, the tops of thunderstorms. You can see there's all these thresholds within 10 miles of cumulus clouds with certain heights. Uh, don't launch for 15 minutes if lightning detectors are going off at a certain rate. And look, lightning is a huge, huge problem. Oh, and don't launch into solar storms. I feel like that should be obvious, but I mean, look at this. And this is just in the press kit, so you can imagine what the folks in charge of monitoring the weather there at Kennedy Space Center have to go through just to give the all clear for this launch to take place and then all the other super complicated things that go into motion to get this all done. Now, as you can imagine, <laughs> this time of the year in Florida is pretty rife with thunderstorm activity and that's why you see all those thunderstorm related uh, weather criteria there so look at this this was just the other day uh, NASA did report that you had a lightning strike and that's one of the reasons these big towers are all around the launch pads is they are meant to catch any lightning in the area and keep it from hitting the rocket or the launch pad and disrupting the sensitive electronics and uh, all the other things involved so that, uh, well, there was released by NASA. They reported out that, hey, you know, we checked everything. Everything seemed to be fine, even with such a close uh, lightning strike. So those lightning towers, super, super important for the safety uh, of the astronauts as well as the crew. Now, let's take a look at some of the weather in Florida right now. If you don't know where the Kennedy Space Center is, and uh, maybe you've just been to Orlando, to Disney World, um, maybe you've just been to Miami for a vacation or something like that. So you can see Miami down at the bottom of your screen. You can see Orlando. Orlando is the closest place uh, to Cape Canaveral. In fact, it's just a little highway jog away. There's a lot of cruise ships uh, that go out uh, into the Caribbean in uh, areas just to the south there in Port Canaveral. But you have then the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station which does military rocket launches and things of that nature. And then you head up the coast from Cape Canaveral. And so right there, then you have the Kennedy Space Center, which is where you have uh, all the SpaceX launches, where you have uh, obviously these launches of this Orion spaceship, this Orion capsule and the Space Launch System big rocket that's going to lift it off uh, into orbit. So let's look at the weather and no surprise, hey, it's hot and stormy. And that's what happens this time of the year in Florida. This is a six hour loop and you'll notice the way that the storms are moving. And so this is pretty important when you're talking about uh, weather in the state of Florida. Which way does the wind blowing? Because that's going to determine which way the storms are going. So if winds are blowing from the east to the west as they are doing uh, as they're doing on this Sunday, usually that means that the coastline where the winds are coming from so that would be the east coast you can see showers developing there in the morning hours and then moving on shore very quickly during the day that is a concern considering this is a morning launch so ideally you probably want the winds to be going the other direction because in the morning usually the coast that is uh, seeing the winds blow offshore that is usually the quiet coast in the morning and things are often pretty quiet so that's something that is going to be really important and one of the reasons why there is still some notable doubt as to whether it is going to be full go as for if that will happen 
if there will be a shower or storm and messes up this launch time, that's just the luck of the draw. Very random weather. <laughs> Very random how these showers and storms pop up in the state of Florida. So it'll be interesting to watch. It's going to be very, very early here. 5.33. Likely that will be a, a pop-in on Good Morning Northwest. We haven't really talked about, though, uh, we talked a little bit but about what this mission is going to do. So, right, so the ultimate goal, we want to put people on Mars. First, we're going to put people on the moon. We're going to learn more about how we survive for a long time in space. But we want to do it safely. These are all brand new systems from the capsule that everyone's going to fly in from rocket that's going to bring everything out of Earth's orbit. All of this is brand new. So this is a test flight. Uncrewed. The whole system moves up. You can see the Orion capsule launches. Then that capsule is going to take a little figure eight trip around the moon back to Earth. We'll parachute land in the Pacific Ocean and our buddies at the Navy are going to pick things up. So. If this is a test hopefully everything goes well and if something doesn't go well well hey that's space travel they make things better get things right so that when people are in this the next time everything goes according to plan so this is going to be a really fascinating start of what should i think be a really fascinating decade for space exploration but you got to get off the ground first and that is where Meteorology plays an important role in getting us into outer space. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, like our 4 News Now YouTube page. Um, we are also stream these uh, videos on KXLY+. Plus. That's our streaming app. You can find it on the Roku, the Fire Stick, all that good stuff. And if you like this kind of nerdy stuff, hey, subscribe to the Brainstorm newsletter. We're putting out stuff at least once a week, We're talking about local weather and science and climate and neat stuff like this every single week about what's going on in the inland Northwest and beyond. So have a wonderful week. We'll see how things go with Artemis One, see how things go with our local weather, and we will be back soon with another dive into the science behind the weather and all sorts of things around it. Have a good one.